Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we are going to be creating a page in the 6x6 Dina Wakely journal using gloss sprays. So this is me playing with some new supplies I got and you will notice I've got clean stencils <laughs> and a clean splat box which I'm working in to do the sprays. Um, if you do have the, the gloss sprays I would really suggest um, getting an old cardboard box and cutting down one of the sides so you've got a box to spray in because you can, will notice from where I'm spraying that the spray actually goes quite far up the box. Um, so just to control it a little bit is a good idea because uh, it is acrylic spray and it's not just going to wipe off. You'll need hand sanitizer or something much stronger to actually remove it. So as I was doing this page, <laughs> I really loved how I'd got this page to this point. I thought, yep, love it. I wish I'd stopped here. I actually really like how it turns out in the end, but as you'll see in just a moment, there's going to be a m absolute mess happen, particularly on the left-hand side, um, which I wasn't as impressed with. So I was playing around with um, layering the acrylic paint, uh, the, the acrylic gloss sprays and I want to put some in the background because you know it's me and white space and why would I have white space when I can put a color in it. Um, so it wasn't too bad I put the turquoise down but I want really wanted to use these masks so I used the darker color and I wanted to sort of blend it into the next page. The issue I had um, was that the gloss sprays bled in under the stencil um, or under the masks which I understand because they're very light and the um, acrylic sprays are quite opaque. Uh, not opaque, but they've got a heavier droplet, so um, they can run. And here you can sort of see me trying to fix it up, trying to get that yellow back because I really missed having that really beautiful pop of yellow on this page. And by blotting off the... Um, night that dark color I put on I sort of got rid of the whole effect in the first place so I was actually really really annoyed at this stage and really peeved and I just didn't know what I wanted to do so I decided that I would go in and just draw the letters in and um, just to kind of highlight them again now I didn't particularly dry this page all this well so my white pen wasn't working as well as it should have either and my white pen's nearly dead as well. So it was just, I was just getting frustrated because for once I actually kind of had a vision in my head of where I wanted this page to go and it just wasn't going the way I wanted it to. Um, if anyone can, yeah, I'm sure lots of people go through that, but it was just frustrating. So I decided I'd give the, the gloss sprays one final go and I decided to use white the other thing that I did was I actually left them in place for a little bit longer than I did before. So trying to get them to dry as much as possible before I move them. And you can see while it has sort of bled in a little bit, it's more successful than the first one. I'm also going in and blotting it off again. So um, it didn't work out too bad in the end. I do kind of wish I had that darker color over the top, but I quite like how the white worked as a resist. And I'm just going in onto another page just to clean off those letters. Now, usually I don't clean my stencils, but because I'd already had, these were brand new stencils and I'd already had the issue with it leaking in underneath, just because they're so light, um, I didn't want them to have the issue of um, leaking underneath because I had um, like paint droplets on the background that are slightly raised so I wanted to keep them as as normal as possible on this um, page I decided that I really wanted to use this new stamp set so again you can see brand new stamp set it's clean um, this stamp set's from Dina Wakely it's called funny people it's a weird set it's again something I probably oh I, I lie I'm a Dina Wakely tragic so I probably would have picked it up but I didn't looking at it sort of during creativation it's like yeah that's okay I like the line drawings of it but I'm not sure how I would use that um, but then I saw some people using it um, as a family and it just really appealed to me and there's four of us in our family and 
I could just see possibilities for it. So when this page and when the word life was on here, it's like, yep, those four have to sit together. Around the word life, I've used some of the mark making stamps on the um, book itself. And the reason I've stamped the images onto deli paper is because I want a really clear stamped image. The reason I stamped straight onto the page with the mark making stamps is I wasn't worried if they were slightly rough and ready because it was just texture on the page. So if you want a really clear focal image, I'd really suggest, particularly on these thicker, bumpier um, watercolour pages, to stamp onto some tissue paper, um, like gift wrapped paper or deli paper if you've got that. Oh, flies just attacked me. Um, otherwise, um, if you wanted to, I suppose, and you didn't want to see through to the background, you could stamp out and white paper or white card. It really doesn't matter. I stamp onto the tissue paper because I like to have the background um, show through. So the great thing about tissue paper, and you can see it here, is it sort of melds into the page. I can still see the colours from the background peeping through, but I've got that stamped image over the top. So I'm also, with the tissue paper, it gives you a bit of an opportunity to um, layer over the images together. So I've got a little family group happening, um, which I really, really like. So I'm just drying off the gel medium, making sure everyone's in place, including the little baby. And then I think I trim off the edge. No, I'm going around with a stippler or pencil. So just to add to sort of the... the um, chaotic nature of that word I suppose I'm being really loose and sketchy with my lines around it and I'm also going in with the stamped image itself and putting in some of the extra lines and you'll see obviously those images now sort of pop straight out of the page so if you find that your ink pad is a little bit um, dull or gray and you don't have a re-inker to re-inker it image you can always go in and redraw over the top of it and the great thing about these stamps in particular are they're supposed to be um, sketchy and loose and you know it doesn't matter if you don't have the lines in the right place because they don't have the lines in the right place underneath um, my page I've written still happens I know it doesn't look like that but it is actually still happens <laughs> I promise. Um, so life still happens because again, um, this is these pages are all being created in March, where you know the whole world's in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it's obviously weighing on my mind as the minds of the whole rest of the world. So I, my way of dealing with it is to work in my art journal. So I've got a bit of a record of what happens and how it was making me feel. So here's a close-up of the final page. From where it got messy in the middle to where it ended up, I actually really like it. I really like how that life ended out and the beautiful family sort of hanging in there together as well. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions or queries, please write a comment below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up or subscribe. I'd really love to have you join our community. Until next time, bye for now.